Christmas or Luminalia looks like it might be coming a little bit early for Stanton's industrialists. The long-awaited first iteration of Salvage seems to be just round the corner. 318's yet to hit open PTU and I don't like covering leaks on the channel, so this is going to be a bit of a theory craft about how we might run small and large salvage ops. If that sounds good to you, then grab a cup of tea while I roll the intro, and then let's get into it. Hello and welcome back or welcome to the channel. I'm Loudguns and today we're going to be looking at this first iteration of the salvage game loop, hole stripping. Essentially this is peeling the shiny coating off ships and recycling the valuable materials contained within. It looks set to be a profitable profession with RMC, the commodity produced by hole scraping, being billed as on par with the most valuable mineables, so I'm guessing that's Quantanium which sells for about 8.8k per SCU. When the patch goes live, players will be able to salvage by hand using a breakout multi-tool attachment, which I believe is going to be freely available, and two ships will be whole strip capable. We've got the Drake Vulture, which will be releasing for those who pledged cash for it this patch. This solo scraper was shown off at the recent IAE, and think about it as almost the prospector analogue of the salvage world, with a comfortable, if very Drake, cab and living quarters for the solo operator, and a cargo hold in the back for 12 SCU of RMC. The Aegis Reclaimer, on the other hand, is at the other end of the spectrum. This beast, with its straight out of Aliens vibe, has long been one of my favourite looking ships, but it finally looks set to lose the mantle of most expensive FPS level. Hull stripping is only part of the Reclaimer's envisaged functionality. The ship also has a complement of tractor beams and a crushing claw that should help it to munch down bigger pieces of hull. But at least for the time being, it looks set to get some real use. Unlike the Vulture, the Reclaimer will be viable for credits as it is now in stores, although it will set you back 15.1 million, which could be a tall order right after a wipe. Don't get me wrong, I understand capitalism, but it's a bit of a shame to me that probably for the next patch, the entry level ship for a brand new profession is cash only. So during this vid I'm going to try and put together a few ways in which groups of players might be able to work on the loop together, giving more people a chance to get involved in the loop and potentially yielding greater returns by working together. One of the key things which really attracted me to Star Citizen was the potential for running multifaceted operations. The more you look at different game loops, the more you start to see the synergies between them. This is why I set my Org Frontier Consolidated up with five different divisions covering the broad areas of industrial, combat, support, logistics and exploration and science. There's a link to our Discord in the video description if you'd like to come and hang out and consider joining up. A lot's been made of the cargo refactor, which is also coming with 318, as the pure tool of pirates. But to be honest, piracy is a tiny little part of why the cargo refactor is so important. The physicalization of cargo is what will eventually make multiple loops possible to integrate. And in the future, far more transfers of cargo boxes between players are going to be between mutually consenting parties. The key to optimizing a good industrial operation is to analyze your bottlenecks and do what you can to minimize them therefore maximising your profits per hour. In a mining operation, and I assume salvage operations go follow a similar pathway, two key bottlenecks appear. The first is finding something to mine, or in this case salvage, and then the second is the return to base, the run back to the refinery in the mining world. So let's focus on the second element first, because it really ties into the cargo refactor. Miners currently face a problem that they have to transport their goods to a refinery, and if you're mining quantanium, that's done under time pressure. All the time you take travelling is dead time, you're not doing the thing, finding, lasering and scooping rocks that makes the money. The same is going to happen with salvaging. Once your 12 SCU cargo hold is filled up in the Vulture, you're going to need to go and sell up. But what if you can instead hand off to another ship, ideally one more suited for the job like a specialised cargo ship. That could transport more RMC, contains a faster jump drive to reduce the time spent delivering it, and handles better. All of this could make it a more efficient choice. But wait, didn't you read the cargo refactor AMA, I can almost hear you ask. 
And yes, the version of the cargo refactor which is coming in with 3.18 does clearly state that if I willingly or unwillingly give you my cargo, it's going to be treated as stolen. But what if you were flying my ship? So I theorise that the ownership of commodities is tied to the player, not to a certain vehicle. I could be incorrect in this assumption, so I want to be really clear that it is one. But CIG have spoken about how players should be able to go back and retrieve their lost cargo. So this implies that as long as my cargo is on one of my ships, it's all good and should be recognised as legal. So I'm planning to do some test stops with my friends to see if we can have a cargo ship owned by the same player who owns the salvage ship, that follows the salvagers around, and when they get full or pull in a good haul, the two ships meet in dead space for a handoff of the RMC. The owner of the ships would need to be the one that went off to sell at intervals when the cargo ship itself gets full up, but ultimately this can keep the salvage ships doing their thing for longer, and the owner can always hand off control of the salvage ship to their orgmates while they go and sell up. Not only does this mean that the wheels of the operation keep turning, it also means there's a good incentive to rotate positions and let everyone have a go at the loop, even if they don't own a salvage ship right now. Let's just double back on ourselves and think about the second bottleneck before we move on. So that's the actual location of mineables or salvage. Well here is where salvage will potentially be a lot easier than mining, because if you can't find it in the wild, why not make it yourselves? CIG used this as an example when they were demonstrating the stripping and repairing features of the Greycout multi-tool attachment, showing a bounty hunter stopping off to strip RMC from their downed enemy to use it in patching up their own ship after taking a few knocks. Bounty hunting missions and combat beacons offer a ready supply of ships that, after they meet your lasers, will be prime salvage. We had some fun testing the reclaimer in combat, and to be fair to it, with its dual size 5 and 6 dual size 3 turrets, two of which can be operational at once, it isn't a total slouch in combat. Plus its 3 size 3 shields make it a pretty tough cookie. But alongside your salvage ships and your cargo ships, why not think about incorporating some combat ships to deal with these targets more readily? and as luck would have it, provide some protection to your industrial endeavours. With 318, Stanton is likely to become something of a more dangerous space, so it always helps to have some friendlies and fighters nearby. But one of the things that I have heard about people not wanting to run escort for industrial players is that if everything goes well for the industrialists, then it's probably a bad day for the combat pilots who might want something more to do. So this game loop has the potential to create some actual play gameplay for the combat players, because they get to shoot down the PvE bounties, while also being a good day for the industrialists who get to go and salvage them. So let's take a look at putting this all together into a couple of sample operations, one for a small group of friends and another for the larger orcs to try out. So this op is going to be for a group of three to five mates, one of whom got to swiping at IAE or maybe before and picked up a Drake Vulture. All of the parts are obviously interchangeable, apart from the Vulture. I just went with a couple of ships that I personally like the most. The Hurricane is probably the most firepower money can buy for the right side of 1.5 million credits. With its combination of two size 4s and a pilot control and four size 3s for the turret gunner, it can chew through targets many times its size while staying manoeuvrable enough to avoid serious return fire. Obviously the Hurricane does require you to have a turret gunner, so if you've only got one person to dedicate to the combat side, maybe consider something like an Arrow, Gladius or a Vanguard, where more if not all of the firepower sits directly with the pilot. We obviously have the Vulture sat in the salvage spot here, which should be comfortable enough by design to operate with a single person. However, having seen the way the cargo is pushed out of the compactor and requires stacking, it might actually be worth testing if a second can help speed up the process. Then I've added one of my personal favourites, the Freelancer Max, as the cargo ship. With 120 SCU of cargo capacity, this to me is a great SCU to size and price ratio. The ship can fit a size 2 quantum drive, so you can get a speedy XL1 in there for fast deliveries, and at a push with its 4 size 3 guns under pilot control it can even help out in a bit in the fights, assuming you haven't got a load of RMC stash that you don't want to risk. One ship which we don't quite know how much it will cost in game yet is the Misk Hull A, and it might just be worth taking a look to see if the Hull A's external cargo is a bit quicker and easier to stack with the boxes. Again, I feel like you could maybe benefit from having an extra member on logistics. Maybe they could move between the Vulture and Max in Dead Space to help speed up the transfer of boxes from the Vulture to the Max when you need to offload. 
but if you did want to dial things up to 11, you could go with a bigger op like this. At the core are two reclaimers and a C2 as the offload cargo ship. Admittedly, since these three ships would need to be owned by an individual, representing just over 35 million credits of investment, this is probably one for orgs with a sense of collective purpose. But to me, that's what MMOs are really about. Maybe the org leader's 890J party boat will just have to wait. Reclaimers, with their pilot, two stripping turrets, and the need for logisticians to keep the RMC cycling out of the compactor, will probably require a crew of four to five to operate at peak efficiency. So with two of them and an extra two folks to handle the C2, you're looking at 10 to 12 members at the core. And if you're going to keep this both fed and safe, you'll probably want a more serious combat element. Cue more hurricanes and potentially the inclusion of something like a Redeemer, particularly if you wanted to get some less experienced folks some combat time in the turrets. If you're going up against something more massive like an Idris as part of the critical threat beacons, you might consider incorporating a bomber like the Retaliator. But just remember that with salvage being the goal, you don't necessarily want to go for overkill and blow your intended prizes to smithereens. The bigger operations also have the potential to incorporate a support element. If you've dealt with the aforementioned bottlenecks of finding suitable salvage and the return to base, then maybe the next issue becomes having to head back to resupply. Adding a MISC staff error with a tank of fuel could keep everyone out for longer. And don't forget that combat crews could always bring along multi-tools, allowing them to steal a bit of RMC to patch up their own ships, and avoid hitting up the stations for repairs. Finally, I've added a Carrick to represent a scouting element, although I'm not sure at this point what the best ship for the job might be. CIG have stated that we'll be able to find procedurally generated wrecks in the same kind of way that we currently find mineable rocks. So it might also help to have a crew dedicated to searching for particularly valuable prizes out in the black. The beauty of this is that you can kind of scale it up as much as you like, simply add more reclaimers and C2s and additional pods to cover the industry, and balance them with more combat ships and support vessels. Finding the right ratio and fine-tuning this is what striving for ultimate operational efficiency is all about. And thankfully, that's what some space nerds like me truly love. So I hope you found this interesting. In case you haven't guessed it already, I am really looking forward to 318, and I can't wait to put some of these ideas to the test in the open PTU when that gets here. If you found it useful and think I'm doing a good job, then please consider donating a like and subscribe. This channel, which I started just under two years ago, has just ticked over 13,500 subs, and honestly, that's just unbelievable to me. As we roll into the open PTU and the next patch, I'm really going to be diving into salvage and try to put together a guide which is sort of on a par, if not better, than my Quantanium Mining Guide. If you're keen with the new patch to get involved in some more of the multiplayer side of SC, then please just consider coming and joining our community Discord. The link's just down in the video description below. There's absolutely no pressure to join our org, and we run community nights to give folks their first taste of what Sarsitzen can really offer. And with all that said, thank you very much for watching all the way to the end, and I look forward to seeing you next time.